Hello and welcome to Keep Coding. Uh, in this video, we are going to see something different uh, than usual. So usually we'll do a tutorial video, but uh, this time uh, I did a small project last week, uh, which, which I want to share with you how I organize the code and uh, what are the strategies I use and what are the tools I use, what are the packages I used. So I just wanted to give an overview of that so that a lot of the people who are the beginning stage of the programming they don't get to see a code base where they see an actual project uh, and what are the things and how the file structure are organized these things are hard to find so i just wanted to share that so i happen to make a android application using react native and this and this is the application that you're seeing uh, this is the home page so you have a table here which has columns like lot rate quantity and kg and then amount Okay, so you'll be able to add records to it and then as soon as you add records, you'll be able to see uh, the calculated values from the table, uh, the total amount, total weight and then the average rate based on uh, whatever you are inputting. Okay, so if I click the add button here, so I'll be getting a form, say uh, I'm giving a number uh, which is just for identity and then uh, I'm giving a rate. Uh, 950 and then a quantity of 10 and then kg of 20 so I'll explain you what is this quantity and kg so imagine uh, these things as um, packs of rice or wheat uh, so say you have 500 kgs of rice okay uh, so you split into 75 kg packs once you're filling this 500 kgs into 75 buckets then you will have the remaining somewhere like 25 kg or 50 kg as the remaining thing right so that is the kg part whereas the quantity is the number of buckets uh, that you are able to fill completely which means 10 in the sense uh, it will have 10 75 kg buckets already and then you have something remaining like a 20 kg outside this so the total amount will be like uh, these 10 into 75 which is 750 kg plus the 20 kg which is so it will be 770 kg okay so uh, that is the purpose of this quantity and kg so i'm just adding it and it just calculates the amount so this 950 is is the rate of one bucket then it just calculates how many buckets it's ha it is having uh, and then it calculates the remaining 20 kgs rate based on the bucket rate as well so this is where you are getting this amount and then you'll be able to add multiple records like this um, can you one at one 925 so you have five buckets and then you have 65 kg remaining um, so i'm just adding it okay so now it shows like uh, 16 buckets and 10 kg if you add it you will understand that uh, once it is going to 85 then it forms already a bucket and then you will have 10 kg remaining so this is how it's being calculated and the average rate uh, based on all this uh, av average bucket rate based on all this okay so this is the requirement uh, this is extremely simple um, that that's why i wanted to do with some new things that i've been learning i wanted to experiment with those libraries uh, i'll explain you what are the uh, libraries shortly uh, and other than this uh, there is one more functionality like you'll be able to edit it by long pressing it uh, if you give edit then you'll see the values whatever you filled you'll be able to update it and then similarly you'll be able to uh, delete a record okay it's very simple you don't have storage uh, you don't have to worry about sending to my you don't have to worry about sending to some api so it is just as simple as a calculator or, an, or a simple excel sheet now let's look at the text stack uh, that i am using for this uh, project okay so I chose React Native and then uh, obviously anything 
that is good as a project i i will definitely use typescript uh, and then i've been learning mobx for state management and i wouldn't wanted to try it out since this is a small project and i think it's it's a good place to experiment uh, and see the benefits of mobx and then uh, native base 3.0 is out recently so I, I gave a try with that as well for the ui uh, and then i've been uh, experimenting with tdd as well whenever i can and uh, how much tdd is useful on the ui part is where i'm curious uh, and uh, and i tried to use tdd with just it worked out partially and it didn't work out on the ui part which i'll uh, explain you um, so le let's just uh, jump into the code and i'll show you what are the things that i've done uh, so this is the folder structure so i have the main app component out here and then uh, i have a components folder uh, and then i have a stores folder for uh, storing the mobx stores and then i kept a types folder which i didn't use much uh, in this project but usually it is useful to have a types folder so if you notice that we had only two screens in the uh, application the home page where the table and the calculations are happening and then you have a form where you'll, you are able to add or edit so it's a single form which i reused for both adding and editing so basically i have only two pages i'm so i'm using react navigation here uh, if you notice i have only two screens and then i'm creating a store uh, i'm having only one store since this application is small but mobx allows you to create multiple stores unlike redux that that's the main uh, advantage of it so i'm just passing the store object to both the screens uh, if you look at the screen uh, i kept these screens as empty as possible in the sense i didn't want to add any uh, functional logic into it or or any state that is involved in the application so I wanted to keep it as clean as possible without having anything. Uh, since I'm using MobX, I wanted to keep it clean. And one more reason that I wanted to do is because I, I'm, I was doing TDD. Okay. So I wanted to add uh, tests for all the core functionalities, uh, all the calculations and uh, all the additions and deletions that are happening. So all these things I wanted to keep uh, in the test so that I don't have to run the emulator frequently and test all the use cases by going to that emulator. Okay. So when I was developing it throughout, so I didn't open the emulator at all. I kept on writing tests for all these stores. And then once the store is ready and I started doing the UI and only when I'm doing the UI, I, I started running the emulator and seeing the output. I think this saved a lot of time because emulators are slow and the testing in emulators is, is a really tough thing so that way it was easy and uh, since you're seeing the views uh, i was using uh, native base okay native base is really wonderful uh, if you have used chakra ui for web it is kind of similar to that so you'll be having all the utility functions like you'll be able to pass margins as props there are components for everything uh, like heading and then text uh, and then different sizes of heading so everything will be able to handle through just the props you don't have to define styles at all i haven't defined any styles if you see um, so you'll be able to pass the colors and they are having uh, standard colors as well like primary 300 400 it, it's somewhat like chakra and tailwind okay it is a really good one so i think um, in react native we haven't had anything as good as uh, native base 3.0 I, actually i have tried native base 2.0 i wasn't happy with it i didn't like the design of it i felt it was outdated but 3.0 is too good uh, i think i will use it in any project going forward the only other screen that i have is this so here I'm having the form, uh, even the form inputs I'm using native base. And I kept the state for the forms locally. Okay, so these states are local, 
but then once you are adding to it and then you are editing and saving so all those things were uh, happening to the store uh, if you see here um, handling adding or update will go to the store at the end okay so i'll explain these things later so other than this i have simple components this is the one that uh, displays the result here and uh, this is for the table for showing the table here okay so i'm just uh, using these in the home page there is nothing else i have fancy out here now let's take a look at the store part uh, which is the most important one where i, I got to experiment a lot so this is the store so i have uh, i'm keeping all the tests out here uh, parallelly with uh, the files i didn't want to have a test folder i wanted to keep the tests as uh, as close as possible to the actual file so that uh, the imports everything will be similar in both the test file and as well as the store file uh, the actual code file i meant so here uh, i did the TDD approach so I wrote the test first and then I went back and created the code in the store and satisfied uh, those tests okay so it was really useful because uh, these calculations uh, are involving decimals though though it looks simple when you are uh, calculating for the entire table it involves at least three four formulas uh, so it was really useful uh, to have um, tests to make sure that for all the values we are getting the right result since it is involving financial stuffs obviously these tests gives us the confidence that for all the values will it will not fail for example there are cases like you you will you won't be testing the zero values at all so it is easy for you to get uh, divided by zero error so i wanted to test out these cases so that uh, we are not facing anything uh, or after delivery uh, now if you see I have uh, I have a store and I'm adding an object to it so initially uh, like in all other react projects I wanted to just have interfaces to define the types okay but then I wanted to experiment with value objects uh, if you have learned a uh, domain driven development you would have heard about value objects a value object is something a value object is something that is created once but it will never be modified and TypeScript has really good constructs for that for example uh, if you're using read only next to your constructor then these things will become properties in your class automatically and those properties will be read only you will now be able to change those values so once uh, you are calling the constructor you after that you will not be able to change the values and with the mobx or redux Whatever you use you will know that those things are Immutable and you have to return a new object every time you are modifying. Okay, so it is one way to ensure that when you are having value objects You will be creating a new object uh, whenever you are trying to modify something from it. Okay, and then keeping these getters along with the actual uh, logic for example the quantity as i said is having the number of packets and then the remaining kg right so therefore for the calculation purpose you will need to know the entire quantity in kg in some cases and in some cases you will have the entire quantity in kg and you will want to convert it into uh, the buckets and the remaining kg value objects is is a really good way to do that so you are keeping all this logic as close as possible so that when you need to make the change you will know where to go for and i don't have to write this formula again because i, I have defined it once here and wherever else i need it i'll be just calling this uh, from this object and i'm having a static uh, function uh, where you you can pass a kg and then you'll be getting a new quantity object easily this uh, is also something that we are using in the calculation so similarly I have one more value object a uh, lot record so even these value objects I am testing so if you see uh, I'm just calculating the in kgs uh, are proper and then I'm checking the from kg static function as well and then um, uh, I have a similar uh, 
uh, value object for uh, lot record the table that you're seeing this table this uh, single record is a is a separate value object you create it and then the amount is a getter of that value value object so basically um, you create it and i'm having a unique id for each record so that i can use it for editing and deleting purposes so the amount is being calculated here and if you see i'm using in kg which means it will be using this directly okay so it just makes the code simple and then i'm having one static function where i'll be able to provide all the string values from the form and it will return a valid value object record if the form values are invalid then you'll get an error automatically now let's talk about the store so here we have the store and this is the only function that you need to call in a normal class for mobx to take over that as a store okay so this is the state and these are getters and then these are actions any method you are having is an action to change the state and then you can have getters based on uh, parameters as well uh, just as fun functions so now here i have um, a method for adding a method for deleting and all these methods are immutable uh, changes so that's it so just because i've separated it into uh, different value objects so if i don't have these value objects then the this store would have been a mess uh, adding would have been a mess and then uh, deleting all these logics will be spread everywhere uh, even if you see the average rate this looks simple here for example you are able to call in kg easily and then you are able to call um, for calling the total amount you are able to call the amount getter from the lot record and you are able to reduce that quantity easily by just adding all this uh, based on the kg and then and finally passing it to the quantity dot from kg i really felt mobx is giving a a lot of cleaner approach compared to Redux and testing these Mavic stores is as simple as testing any class see uh, I, I don't have any Mavic related test helper for this I'm just uh, creating an object for that and calling whichever firm methods that I've created it's as simple as that uh, I'm, I'm not doing any complicated to test it and uh, this also keeps me away from keeping all the local states and complicating stuffs and creating custom hooks uh, those those things are a bit less testable compared to mob store is, is my feeling and one more thing uh, I, I try to test all these components as well but uh, that didn't work out well so I tried snapshot testing but it is returning the same snapshot for all the components I don't know why and I think it is because uh, native base and it is always re requiring this provider and it it has some dependencies some other dependencies as well so i stopped testing it after a while as i didn't feel uh, it was helpful so i, I need to give a try again using uh, react test renderer but then the stores part tdd worked really well it saved a lot of time from testing the actual application in the emulator that that is a very time consuming thing and i really hate it uh, and I would love to write a few more lines of test compared to going to the emulator and testing it again and again. So that's all I had. So um, it, it is a simple project. It doesn't have anything complex. And even in a complex project, you'll be able to have all those AP calls, everything maintained in the stores. And then you'll be able to test and mock these stuffs at the store itself so that uh, more than 80 to 90 percentage of your core logic will be available in the stores and it is easily testable so that the remaining part uh, you can just do snapshot testing you don't have to uh, try to test all the props everything i, I think uh, testing all the score uh, data models will will take you a long way thank you for watching i'll, I'll share my experiences with uh, any future projects that i have uh, Please leave your feedback in comments so that I'll know which ones were helpful to you and which ones were not. And if you have a better way to do a project like this, then please share it.
thank you for watching if you like the video please subscribe to my channel so that i can post more videos similar to this bye